The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. My purpose here is to solve the age-old riddle that has been gradually sending all of us insane. Why did they call this game Silkworm? How did a computer game featuring a helicopter and a jeep fighting in a war zone get compared to a lazy, virtually immobile, larvae creature? Well, I lied to you. There is no definitive answer to the puzzle, but in my search for the truth, I've been able to draw a distinct parallel between these two seemingly discordant things. For both Silkworm the Caterpillar and Silkworm the video game ooze quality from every orifice. Essentially, Silkworm is a classic side-scroller in the same vein as our type your one vehicle pitted against innumerable waves of bloodthirsty enemies. The main feature that sets Silkworm apart from the legions of our type clones is its marvellous cooperative two-player mode. Player 1 commandeers a helicopter that, while being highly manoeuvrable, lacks the ability to shoot behind and directly above it. Player 2 drives a jeep that is decidedly less agile but overcomes the limitation by having a full 180 degrees worth of fire. Separately, these vehicles are vulnerable to certain enemy attacks, but together, and in the right hands, the two could become a deadly combination. This translates into some awesome, work as a team or will both die multiplayer action, which is a welcome change from the I'm just going to watch you die because you're always stealing my power-ups gameplay that I'm usually accustomed to. The two-player mode is accessible for players of varied skill levels, because while the helicopter has an easy time in the sky, the poor, suicidal dude in the jeep has to dodge repeated death from all angles. Never bring a jeep to a helicopter fight. If you have nobody to play with at the time, you can choose to play a single-player game with either of the two vehicles, but that's only half of the fun. You'll soon come to realise that this is a game of pure reflexes, and while you can make your life easier by memorising the different enemy types and their attack patterns, it won't necessarily guarantee your survival. The game begins at a respectable difficulty level, but after a few stages, things quickly turn nasty, and it's not uncommon to find yourself dodging a dozen missiles, blasting away at an armoured goose chopper, with kamikaze enemies missing you by the margin of a single pixel. This unforgiving difficulty is compounded by the fact that the Amiga version only allows you three lives in three credits, which kind of makes you wish the Amiga 500 was manufactured with a coin slot. Another thing which is really impressive is that, occasionally, tiny squadrons of helicopters fly past in the distance, or aircraft carriers launch fighters in the background. These are totally harmless, and occur even when the screen is full of sprites and bobs. Silkworm is an attractive looking game that is filled to the brim with originally designed mechanised baddies that attack you in great sprite swarms. They move across the screen at a very decent frame rate, which is quite a feat considering how much mayhem is going on. There are some gigantic bosses that dwarf your vehicle with their immense size and create equally impressive explosions. The backgrounds are beautifully drawn and the hues and time of day change from level to level, which keeps the journey fresh and interesting. There is a plethora of fantastic sound effects to please your ears here. Missiles launching, ricocheting bullets on metal, and the explosions. Oh, the explosions. It's official. This game sports some of the meatiest explosion sounds ever heard in a video game. Whether it be making a force field reach critical mass, or when you deliver the killing shot to a boss, to hell with what your neighbours think. Get Silkworm loaded up on your Commodore 64 and turn it up loud. It should be noted that the title screen on demo mode sports quite a catchy theme tune, but unfortunately you'll press fire before you'll ever really hear it. Silkworm the game is easily one of the tightest arcade conversions ever ported to the mighty Commodore 64. There is still plenty of fun to be had here, so I suggest you go and get yourself some silkworm action today. 
it doesn't matter if it's the game or animal variety. Both of them are a safe bet, because your decision will result in either precious fabric or precocious fun. The graphics, especially on the Amiga, are really atmospheric, and the sound effects on both versions are pretty hot as well. On the Commodore 64, you also get the great Ben Dagli soundtrack. What impresses me even more is that they've bothered to program in an extra alien, especially for the Amiga, which means you get the equivalent of the arcade game, and even more. This is one shoot 'em up you can't afford to miss. Thanks for watching, guys. That's it for now, but the Silkworm Saga will continue in a game we will also be looking at Swiv. And if you're interested in watching that or any other videos on the playlist, then please consider subscribing to the channel to be notified of any upcoming videos. In the meantime, don't forget to hit the like button and let me know what you thought of Silkworm in the comments section. Did you love this game? Did you prefer Swiv? I'm interested to know your thoughts. Looking forward to seeing you all in the next video. And until then, bye for now.